G'day, it's Bill here from Sidea Real Trading. I've got some nifty gear. We've had this harmonic drive from Pegasus Astro for a couple of months now. It's their Nix 101. Uh, we've got the latest firmware and some attachments for tripods like this carbon fiber one, and we're pretty impressed. The Nix, which is named after the Greek goddess of the night, by the way, is bigger and more capable than most of the other harmonic drives with a capacity of around about 20 kilos. That's without a counterweight. You add a counterweight, you get it to uh, about 30 kilos. And your typical harmonic mount is around about two thirds of this. So let's have a look. The harmonic or strain wave drive has been around for quite some time. There's a few still on the moon. They're very commonly used in industrial robots and now they're becoming popular, as you can see, in astronomy. Their big advantage is that they have absolutely no backlash, even when they're running. But they can also produce huge amounts of torque so they can carry enormous loads without flexing. What that means is that they can be small and part of a very portable rig. So for example, if you're chasing a total solar eclipse, this can very well mean the difference between being in the right spot and getting clouded out. And just imagine the heartbreak. So this Pegasus Nix 101, as you'd expect for a super portable mount, comes in a tiny little case. Um, I've also got matching carbon fibre tripod here. I've got some adapter plates and a set of stand-ups so we can raise the mount a little bit above the tripod. Incidentally, the tripod weighs just two kilos and it's gonna take up to about 50 kilos. That's insane. We're gonna be putting um, this spray on it um, and that is not gonna stress the mount at all. But first, let's talk about the mount. I'm just gonna have to shift slightly to the left here. First of all, connections. Now, modern mounts are all about connectivity, you know, using either cables or wireless. The cables for power and comms go on the back plate here. Uh, during operation, this part of the mount doesn't move at all, so you can have cables dangling from here with no risk of tangling. The mount uses collared GX12 type power connections that won't pull out, because you screw them in. Uh, there's a main power in socket and a power out socket that you can use to power things like power boxes up on the mount, and these can then go onto other equipment like your camera, focuser, dew heaters, and all that stuff. Oh, incidentally, the mount consumes about 0.4 amps just sitting there, that's the brake working, uh, 0.7 amps during tracking, and up to around about 2.5 amps when it's slewing flat out. The power out socket can provide up to about 7 amps. Uh, there's the PC connection, which is a USB 2. Uh, now, the mount isn't going to need the bandwidth that USB 3 offers, and US 2 is more reliable for longer cables. Um, you're expected to con uh, connect the mount through a computer, and you can do that either through the cable or Wi-Fi. I prefer USB because uh, Wi-Fi signals can be unreliable at my dark sky site. Uh, so does Pegasus, as they point out in the manual. Turning to the Wi-Fi connection, you can use a couple of different ways to connect to the mount. Uh, once the mount is powered, you'll see there's an SSID as Nix101 underscore plus eight characters or something uh, when you look at available Wi-Fi connections on your phone or your computer. Uh, the mount can also separately connect to your home Wi-Fi and you can do everything there. Uh, and it's also used for firmware updates and stuff. Once you're connected through your phone, you can use the Pegasus Unity app for, uh, for iOS or Android, or you can go direct to something like Sky Safari. Sky Safari is my favorite Planetarium uh, app. Um, the front of the Nix has a place for a Pole Master and it doesn't need an adapter at all. The Pole Master's camera simply screws to the front of the Nix using three M3 screws. Um, there are six holes to allow you to change the orientation of the pole master if you feel that you need to. The mount reports temperature, pressure, altitude and voltage use back to the Unity app. Uh, it doesn't have a humidity sensor, so you'll still need one of those if you want to control your dew heaters automatically. You'll get one with a power box or something like that. Um, okay, right, here is what you'll get with the mount. Uh, you get the mount in its nice hard case. You get the standard Pegasus power supply, uh, which puts out 12 volts and up to five amps. Um, Pegasus has a 10 amp version if you need to. Uh, there's an azimuth dowel, and we'll see this soon when we put the tripod together. Um, there's altitude locks, that's the two T-shaped ones, and there's azimuth locks, they're the two L-shaped ones. There's an M12 center bolt, which you use to attach to an, M, uh, to a, an EQ6 mount tripod. 
Uh, you'll also get the standard USB 2 cable for connecting to a computer and it's not in this photograph. Right, here it is all built. I've got the Esprit on the Nix, which is on the carbon fibre tripod with the standoffs. Now if you've got a smaller refractor, you may not need the standoffs, uh, and also for a heavy telescope, you might decide to use more standoffs, so you can get up to six in there. Incidentally, I also put it together on an EQ6 tripod, I'll add some video about that uh, at the end of this video. So the mount is turned on, and the easiest way of slowing the mount around is with the Pegasus Utility iOS app from my phone. Um, so. Now once the mount is on, it sets up a Wi-Fi signal that I can connect my phone to. Then I launch the Unity app, which is this one, and that'll sort search for Nix and connect. Um, I can slew the mount, set the slowing rate to different, uh, different settings, and then I can press it basically like this. Now this phone app is good for viewing sessions, but I do prefer one with an actual map. So we go to Sky Safari. Uh, you can use others like Stellarium, um, depending on which one's your favourite. You'll have to ditch the Unity app uh, before you use, uh, launch Sky Safari. Um, now, in the setup area, you use the Mead LX200 Classic setting. Uh, you set up as a German, German Equatorial and you use the IP address 192.168.137.1 and port 9999. So then you find yourself at the main screen in Sky, Sky Safari and you'll see a reticule, which is at the pole at the moment. Uh, you select a star or a planet, touch go to and there we go. Um, assuming it's polar aligned, it will, it will find the target and continue to track it. And that's really good for visual sessions um, where it's just you and the eyepiece and the telescope and the NYX, it's great. Now, if you're a bit more into the astrophotography side of things, you'll probably want to connect to a computer and use ASCOM aware software to control everything. I use Voyager and Sequence Generator Pro, but any number of ASCOM aware packages will work just fine. You can also use an ASIR. Your computer has to have the Windows Unity app and the ASCOM platform installed, obviously, and you connect to the computer via, from the Nix using a USB cable. Using Unity on your computer, you can do all the things you can do through your phone and more, including a lot of setup for the Nix. But Unity provides an ASCOM front end, and so once you've got it installed, you'll see the Nix as a mount in your, your program's ASCOM chooser drop-down list. Uh, here I'm using Sequence Generator Pro, and you can see the mount is in the drop-down here. Oops, not that one. That one is the, the Pegasus Astro mount. Now the mount is controlled by your software and your target's coordinates are set in your sequence. So you launch the sequence, it slews to the target, plate solves to confirm it's on, and you're running. So let's see, if I just dial up a target, oh, here we go, tarantula, that'll do. Uh, hit the slew button, it'll say yes, and off she goes. So the Pegasus 101, Nix 101 sets up nicely on the tripod and it connects via USB or Wi-Fi so you can use it for visual or astrophotography. It's small, it's light, and it's strong. And I'm just gonna check that, yep. <laughs> it'll carry a big telescope and it'll point and track accurately. There we go. It'll be the heart of a really portable system, one which would allow you to move locations and set up quickly. And you can use a little car like I do. One last thought though. This mount is extremely capable and you might find it tempting to put a big scope on it. This Esprit won't trouble the Nix at all, but if your aim is to build a portable rig for viewing or astrophotography, you might find a smaller scope will be a better overall strategy, but that's up to you. So that's the Nix 101 Harmonic Drive mount. If you like this video, we've got others. They're on the Saudi Real Trading YouTube channel. Like, rate, comment, you know, all the usual things. So I'm Bill from Saudi Real Trading and we'll see you next time. This is, I think, the subject of most of the inquiries about this mount. How do I get it onto my existing tripod? So this is what you're gonna need. The EQ6 tripod, of course. Um, this one's my own, and as you can probably see, it's seen an imaging session or two. I've also removed the azimuth pin, so I won't be needing that. You'll also need two adapter plates, that's these guys, and a, and a set of standoffs, that's these ones, and obviously the associated hardware. Now the first thing you need to do is build the cage. So you take one plate, you attach the standoffs, like, like, like so, uh, then you, um, I'm just gonna use three, 
uh, and then you add the plate with the dowel on the top. So I'll build this. Okay, now we have the cage put together. Let's call it a half pier, shall we? Um, we have to attach it to the top of the EQ6 tripod. Now the bottom adapter, that's this one, um, that attaches to the plate using the center bolt up the middle of the tripod, that's this guy. Uh, and also a bolt like this one that goes uh, where the one of, one of the azimuth pins, uh, pin holes were. So I'll just pop that on. Okay, now that's done, we can put the nicks onto the top plate. You use the M12, that's, I won't need that. Use the M12 bolt through the bottom of the top plate, up through there, into the nicks, and you make sure that the, uh, the azimuth locking bolts are gonna be on either side of the dowel here. So let's pop this on there. Um, that's pretty much it. The Nix is now on an EQ6 tripod.